Well, hello. Welcome to Spindle City Straight Talk. I'm Chip. And I'm CJ. And it is Wednesday in the Rev. And boy, we got a ton of stuff to talk about today. Oh, and I'll God. tell you now, I'm pissed off. I am totally pissed off. Join the pissed off club. club. That's it. Yeah. And you know, I just before the sh- you know yesterday this was dropped off to us, and we really didn't say much about it. But today, I don't know if you can read that, but it says we're going to catch you. May a DA join neighborhood meeting, which is the Flint neighborhood meeting, to address violent crime. We have to let the criminal element know it's our neighborhood, not their neighborhood. Mayor Will Flanagan at a meeting of the Flint residents and business owners discussing how to fight crime in Fall River. That's all that needs to be done. Thank you. And we got we got a, the rest of that article here, but we showed that on our show a while back. Actually, yes, we did. Actually, we had the picture of Flanagan, Sutter, and the police chief. Which is what we said on the previous show. That listen, this BS that they keep throwing you, it's all it's all they do is is give you misinformation and lie. Right. Oh, I we can't we can't do anything because it's gonna be a strain on the on the personnel. You know, there were three people at that meeting. The police chief, the DA. And the mayor saying, listen, we're going to tell these people that we're going to crack down on them. We're going to give them the maximum penalty. That's what we said. But these people are full of crap. But you see the difference in this article when I looked at this article? Because we did it again. But you notice what it, this one says. Flint officials, Carlos Caesar, mayor of Flint, uh, president of the Flint Neighborhood Association for many, many years, was involved. You notice that Paul doesn't involve anybody that has a different opinion than him. That's right. Paul Paulo has, Caesar excluded, Paulo has been Clinton. excluded from everything that yep. has to do with the Flint right. since Paul Coogan fundamentally has been in office. This is, the, this is their MO. They, have, they don't care about this city. What that indicates is that they don't care. Everything to them is a photo op. Everything he talks about the Flint, uh, every time he says anything about the Flint, who's he got behind him? Jakey Auchincloss, Carol Fiola. Carol Fiola doesn't give two shits about the Flint. She hates it. She hates the, 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 the subhumans that inhabit the Flint. And I count myself as one of those. So I'm not being elitist here. I am one of those guys. I've lived fundamentally in a Flint my entire life. I grew up in a Flint. And I've lived in a Flint fundamentally since a few years after I got out of the military. And even when I lived out of the Flint, I was on the borderline. You could actually consider it the Flint. I was down, I was down on Jefferson Street. But uh, I've lived in the area my whole life. You know, I you know, I love the Flint. I like the Flint. Okay, I've, been, I've lived here my whole life. But Coogan's full of Coogan is so full of bullshit. If bullshit was bricks, he could build a chimney to the moon and have bricks left over. He excludes everybody. If he goes to the Corky Road, nobody at Corky Road that disagrees with him is involved in the picture. You got all out of towners, out of the neighborhood. He's going to talk about what he's going to do for the Flint, and he doesn't have anybody from the Flint Neighborhood Association standing with him. It's bullshit. Just like the next thing, with the other things we're going to talk about, his talks about crime, nothing. Zero. Just hide in your office like you did when you hid in the schools. Walk around with your hands in your pocket. Keep your mouth shut. Give all your friends jobs and pay raises. And screw the taxpayer. That's what he's done. Again, look at 
actions speak louder than words. Has he once gotten on a year and told these people, get ready for the ATVs again. They've already started a little bit. I saw one on Stafford Road the other day. In the middle of the street, in the middle of the day, popping wheelies going down Stafford Road on an ATV. So get ready. Did once he say, look, we're gonna, we're gonna squash them like bugs. We're gonna do what they did in Providence. We're, we're gonna take their ATVs and their bikes away from them and and put them in a put them in a in a masher and prosecute them. No. Does he say? Did he say once we're going to catch you and we're going to prosecute you? No, what he says is, oh, we're not doing too bad. There's more murders in Chicago than Fall River. That's the that's the Coogan. That's the Coogan. And he's got his his propaganda networks, the sterile news. And we suck at radio. Hype in the propaganda. There is cheerleaders. Oh yeah, but yo oh, yeah, the Paul's gonna do Paul said this and Paul said that. But he's doing nothing. Actions speak louder than words. Has he has he has he tried to assuage we use a a big word for you? The the public's concern about crime? No. With him it's like sh shut up! There's no crime. I don't have a bullet hole in my house. What are you talking about? You don't like it? Go jump in the Tonka River. This is what this this is what this guy does. He's a total incompetent as a mayor. A total incompetent. He's done absolutely nothing except make his friends rich. And and create turn Fall River into the largest employment agency. In, a, in Bristol County. And with that, CJ, I'll turn it back to you because I, I tell you, like I said, these things speak for themselves. Even Jaisal had, an, had a thing on crime. We've got, we had a picture of Jaisal talking about crime. Every mayor's decided to say, well, you know, the people are concerned. As we said, I don't want to hear bullshit statistics because, you know, figures, figures don't lie, but liars can figure. They can't say one at one minute, don't trust the numbers, and then ask you to trust their numbers. And this is what they do. And this is why this city, you know, we're going the way of what Biden's on the campaign trail now. The world's burning around, down around them. We have maybe have World War Three on the horizon in the Middle East, and he's trying to sit on a fence with a picket up his ass and saying, I'm for Israel, but I'm not really against Iran, but I'm, I'm, I'm with Iran, but Israel better not fight their war. Well, I'll tell you what. When we had 9-11, Americans wouldn't have taken kindly to somebody else telling them how to fight their war. In World War II, when we bombed Hiroshima and Nagasaki, and we flattened Dresden in Germany with regular bombs, they didn't use nukes on the, on the Europeans. But you think the United States would have, would have, would have said, you're, you're a friend of ours if you're not going to support our, what we have to do to protect our people? No. But all Coogan does is wander around that building figuring out how he can get his friends richer. And with that, CJ, back to you. It just makes me so aggravated and so irritated when so much is going on. And the propaganda just doesn't stop. Remember what I said in the weekend flush. The general public is willing to believe the lie. It was said by Goebbels. Tell a lie often enough and the people will believe it. That's paraphrased. The people will believe it. And here's what's happening now. According to Joe Good in the sterile news, the mayor says that we need a debt exclusion. We cannot get a debt exclusion. 
You idiot. How many times do you have to be told? We are not incurring the debt. You need to ask for a Prop 2.5 override. And a Prop 2.5 override becomes permanent. And this is what you don't want to say to the people. You're trying to sell it that, well, it's a debt exclusion. And as soon as the debt's paid off, it's done. We're not going into debt. It's not our bond. The bond belongs to Diamond. It's an assessment to us. What part of that don't you understand, you moron? You're supposed to be an educator. You can't tell the difference between a debt exclusion and a Prop 2.5 override? You know better. You are nothing but a liar. A perpetual liar. You do it all the time. And you do it in such minute ways so people think, oh, he's telling the truth. I think you went to the Gerbil School of Propaganda. You're even trying to sell it that if they don't pass this debt exclusion, which is a Prop 2.5 override, that Diamond won't be built. Diamond's already being built. The vote has nothing to do with Diamond. It has to do with taxation. And the fact that you could not manage your budget. And as you said in the interview, the future mayor is going to have a problem trying to find the, the money. And they're going to have to make cuts. Cuts should have been made already. All your friends should have been terminated. All of these feel-good hires that you did should have been terminated. You're the one that's misspending the money. The taxpayer should not have to pay for it. You're supporting all kinds of new taxes on the people of Fall River. And your state delegation are supporting it. Your state delegation said, F you, to the homeless in Fall River and said, We'll give the immigrants, the migrants, the illegals the money. It would have cost $10,000 a month to keep the Timio Center open. But you're willing to spend $10,000 a month on one family that's an illegal. You took $500 million and added it to the budget to pay for their housing. That's taxation. That's my money. That's Chip's money. That's Jeffrey's money. That's Linda's money. That's Mr. X's money. It gets to be very interesting to see. And you're right, Jeff. He is a former vice principal because he could never make principal because he wasn't smart enough. He didn't have the leadership skills to become principal. And this is what we're getting. Do you know that right now, coming before the House and the Senate, is a bill which says that if you buy or sell a house, you will be taxed on the sale price of that house. 0.5 to 2% of the sale price of the house you'll be taxed on. So not only have you made an investment in your property, but when you decide to sell it and hopefully walk away as a chunk, chunk of change in your pocket, the city of Fall River, because that money doesn't go to the state. That money goes to the city. The city of Fall River is going to take another 2% tax on you. And they want to take another 50% tax on your excise tax and another 1% on your room tax. And another 1% on your meals tax. Tax, 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 tax. You know what? It's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. Here's the money in my pocket. You want it? Here's the money in my pocket. You want it? You might as well take it now because you're going to take it in the future. That's for sure. I'm telling you. Tax, 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 tax. That's all we get in this life. Tax, tax, tax. Well, CJ, this is why I don't I think I said it, it well enough. This, this is why we have 1,100 people a month leaving Massachusetts. It's Taxachusetts. It's been Taxachusetts. 
Now it's super tax abusives. But let's get back to the reality. Paul says future mayors are going to have a problem. You're right. Because of you, Paul. Because what have you done? You are telling us how broke we are. Remember that we're going to talk about the pathological prevaricator, Paul. The, the pathological liar that we have for a mayor. Remember when he said we could afford Durfee? It was oh, yeah. going to be paid after eight years. We wouldn't even have a problem paying for Durfee. Because it was going to, we were going to be all set. You and I went to every single one of those neighborhood meetings. And we heard him say exactly that. Oh, what are you worried about? That's in 23. By that time, we'll have so much money, it's not even going to be an issue. It's going to be paid for. Liar. Liar. Now all of a sudden... Oh my God, we needed that debt override so bad for Derpy. We need an override for Diamond now. Why? I'll tell you why. You can't spend, you can't stop spending money. You're still negotiating pay raises. Your CFO talked about looking for concessions from other people when they robbed the damn retirement system? You haven't gotten one concession from anybody except the retirement system that you ramrodded the thing through. And that's not finished. But you're a liar. You lie about everything. Now you want a debt override that you can't get? He may get one, CJ. With all the clout up in, up in uh, Boston he's got, with our useless state representative delegation, they should all be gone. All of them should be gone. They might even change the rules. But it's not the point. We can't get a debt override or a two and a half. We shouldn't get either. We're supposed to have a city that cares about the taxpayer and has a budget that they can live with. Not a constantly, not a constantly increasing budget. He took, the CFO goes in front of the council, we can't get enough, we can't spend, can't get a bond till 33, but they're still spending money. Pay raises. New jobs, still going, Paul. It just keeps chugging along. The gravy train, the patronage train, the nepotism train. It just keeps going. The root cause of all our problems is overspending. And there's never been a mayor in the history of this city that overspent more than you. Nobody's even close. $88 million of federal money. The taxpayers in this city did not save one penny. Not one penny with that $88 million you've blown. Instead, they're looking at every conceivable way to increase everything. Water rates through the ceiling, paying for water you don't use, tax increases, on a state level, increasing everything, giving the city more, more mechanisms to pick your pocket. I don't know if we're going to have enough people left in Fall River ever to take the city back. I got a next door neighbor in a brand new house they just built a few years ago. It's for sale sign up. Right across the street, brand new house. Only built a few years ago. Used to be a single, used to be a two-family house on a very large corner lot. They subdivided it, built two brand new houses. One of them's already got a sign up. He wants to get, he wants to dump his house and get out of town before they're going to charge him for selling his house. 
This is all they know how to do in this state. Give, give money to the rich people and give money to the illegals and screw everybody else in between. And if that doesn't infuriate you, and they do nothing, nothing about crime, nothing about education. We, I got the article here, and I know you got it, CJ. There it is, New Bedford Fall River Schools. Rank high in chronic absenteeism. And what are they going to do about that? They're going to blame that for lack of performance. Oh, they never come to school. Well, why should they go to school? Why should they go to school? When they, go, when they do go to school, they still don't get educated. We're still underperforming. So if you've got 11% ab absenteeism, that means 89% of the people are going to school. And that 89%, that's basically a B plus or an A minus, depending on the grader. You still should be able to perform at least somewhere in the median, not 336. But I can tell you one thing, all your department heads are getting a lot of money, aren't they? They're all getting pay raises. You got six assistant superintendents, and you want a deputy superintendent, and a deputy to the deputy to the deputy, and an assistant to the assistant to the assistant. We just keep paying. That's why government is the greatest business to be in. You never have to have a product that people want, but they just got to keep paying. You go to a restaurant, the food sucks, you don't go back. That restaurant's going to be out of business. Their food sucks, it's out. A business creates a product that's worthless, they're out of business. In the real world, you, you produce an absolute shit product, you don't stay in business. But in government, nobody gives a damn. You, we we got to just keep paying. And there's only one way to get out of it, people, at the ballot box. I'm sorry. I'm blaming you. I'm not blaming these greedy bastards. Because that's in their DNA. This is what they do. He walked around collecting a paycheck for 30 years. Never once complained about how bad the schools were doing. Never said we got to do something about our educational system. But he'll proudly proclaim he's an educator. Even though he never taught in a classroom. Even though he never got to be a principal. Lack of performance is rewarded in government. And this is the problem. Because the only way to control the government is to, is to put somebody in there who's going to care about you and make your life better. We have it on a national level. We've got a president that's destroyed the country, destroyed the economy, and destroyed fundamentally the world. We're on a state, we're on the, the precipice of World War III, and the lunatics. There are lunatics who actually support him. He can't even read a sentence. You don't have to perform now. It's gotten to the, the absurd extreme where the President of the United States cannot look in a camera and make a statement. He's got to look down at a piece of paper when he's got a, a, the head of another country next to him and read. Well, it's really nice to have the President of Mexico here today. Yeah, uh, yeah, and his wife is here too, and, uh, uh, uh well, uh, that's enough of that. Okay. That rotten bag of oatmeal is in the running. You know why? Because people don't like the other guy. They don't like him. He says mean things. It doesn't matter that the economy was great, the border was closed, there, there was peace in the world, there were no wars. <laughs> So tell me these people aren't delusional and detached. I don't know how this is a race. Look at this city. He's in his third term of doing nothing. 
14,000 people showed up to vote. 55,000 people are registered. It's your fault. I voted. But everybody's got to vote. You're going to cry about it or you're going to leave town. And some of us, unfortunately, can't leave town. Everybody who can will. And that's what's going to leave the city with, with the rich running the city and giving everything to people who don't do anything for it. And, and killing a taxpayer and your representatives in Boston are accessories before, during, and after the fact. Because they, they, all they hear is for a photo op. And remember that picture that we showed. They involved the Flint Neighborhood Association, but now the Flint is going to have all these things that Paul promises, the great promiser too. The pathological promiser, in addition to being a, a, being a pathological prevaricator, making promises about the Flint too, but he doesn't even include the people of the Flint. With that, CJ, I'm I'm disgusted and infuriated enough. Back to you. I need a Valium. <laughs> <laughs> this is what happens, people. This is the city you wanted this is the city you demanded this is the city that you needed this is the city that you get because you don't vote or when you vote you vote wrong because you don't pay attention you don't pay attention to what you're doing you don't pay attention to what these people are doing we saw and we have said more than once Going back three terms, going back three terms, what Paul was doing. But no, we're negative. Oh, you're so negative. You have nothing nice to say. You don't like the mayor. It has nothing to do with whether I like him or dislike him. It has nothing to do with whether he's a good guy or a bad guy. It has to do with his job function. It has to do with his job performance. Performance is something Paul has never had to be required to meet. He's never had to meet any performance guidelines. He's never had any metrics on his job performance. He's never had any metrics done on the school department. He has the audacity, the audacity to send a survey out to people to ask them what their opinion of who's necessary to be the next school superintendent. And he asked questions like, what's the, what's the most important goal they need to meet? What do you think their biggest obstacle is going to be? Things like that. Like it matters. Like it matters. I answered it. I answered two surveys that the city has put out. Two. Imagine that. Two. And I said very clearly, and so he knows it's me, I said, remove politics from the job. Do not make it a political job. Remove politics. Don't make these people be abiding by or owing to any politician. Remove the politics from the job. Remove the politics from the hiring process. Remove the politics. You can't do it. You know why? Because Paul can't exist without it. Because without it, he doesn't have any power. This is what we get. It's, isn't and, it amazing, CJ, that they always love to run studies and then they ignore them when they come out the way they don't want it. They just exactly. they know people are not going to... Listen, everybody... This is what you need a lot of. A little <laughs> Pepto Bismol. You got to have a large stock of this. Uh, I go buy these on just just to show you on TV. Get get a little bit of this uh, Pepto Bismol because it, it, it they make you nauseous with their bullshit. He wants us to pick the superintendent of schools. Then they'll say, "Well, you picked the wrong one. You don't know anything about education. Why are you picking it? Well, you're supposed to be educators, and you haven't picked one." I don't know, in, in, in recent history, it did anything. 
The school system has continued to plummet to the bottom of the barrel. Every Everything's plummeted, but we don't hear anything. Then you, you put out these horseshit surveys. Oh, what do you think? Why? When the city council wouldn't push the budget you wanted, you took the budget process away from them on a technicality. You complain about the retirement system being 10% of the budget, but you created that problem. You're stealing money from the system. You people are, you, you people are pathological liars. That's what happens when you've got political career, political ticks in office. You gotta change them. Just like you have to do on every level. Look at the Senate now. The border, the borders out of control. Every city and town is a border town. We're a border town. I go to the post office, I see people sending letters to Honduras to tell their, their relatives how to get into the country and where to come. You know, I go to the supermarket, they're running debit cards that they've maxed out already and they have to be told you gotta go get more money on your debit card. And that's in Fall River. This isn't, this isn't uh, Southwest or Southeast Texas. We're not on the border here. And they don't pay anything. Well, I gotta go pay. I gotta pay for my growth. Nobody gives me a debit card. They give me a bigger tax bill. They give me a bigger water bill. And Jeff was right. A lot, the few stores that we have left are gonna close. You really don't believe, are you that delusionary? You know, I can see all the Richie Riches being delusionary. This, this stuff doesn't bother them. They all live on their estates and they got plenty of money and inflation doesn't bother them and tax bills don't bother them because they just pass it on to us and make more money on our backs. But do you, do you really believe that some of these places that are closing that have been around for a while, this doesn't have an, this wasn't a factor? Oh, Gilles closing. Who's going to buy that now? With the water bills, with the tax rates and stuff. How long is it going to stay in business if it does? They'll end up making market rate housing, which will be derelict. Me sums, another icon of the city, closing. You don't think that the cost... Small businesses operate on a very, very small profit margin. That's why they're always complaining about what happens when they raise the minimum wage. Because if they have to pay their people $20 an hour, they go out of business. Or those people lose their jobs. Is it better to have a job for $15 an hour than have no job with a minimum wage of 20? That's what happened in California. <laughs> McDonald's wiped out three quarters of their workforce. And yeah, me sums closing. Yeah, it's up for sale. But um, you know, it's just that 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 you know, in the old days, they used to at least try to wrap it in some kind of of gift wrap to make it seem like they weren't really giving you the screw job. But now they're just blatant about it. It's like, hey, tough shit. You don't like it. Move out. Well, you can't. Where are you going to go? Where are you going to go? People are even having trouble selling their houses in Florida. Now. Oh, the market was great now, but uh, the house, house uh, I saw a house down the road. It took a while for them to sell it, and it wasn't a fancy house. It was a nice little house, but had trouble. I go buy a house that's been on, on a market for six or seven months up in the Highlands. I mean, look, this stuff is nuts, and, and Goebbels was right. But in a way, we've morphed to make it even worse. Goebbels said, if you tell a big enough lie, often enough people believe it. Now, it doesn't even have to be a big lie. 
You tell them anything and they're going to believe it now with the propaganda. They own the media in this city. Like I said, the, between the sterile news and we suck at radio, you never get you never get anything except exactly what the powers to be want you to believe. And most of it is lies, like CJ said about the debt exclusion. Nobody ever gets to the real cause. Why do we need a debt exclusion, Paul? For Diamond. Remember, you told us that the debt exclusion was a minor, just a little bump in the road. We just get that debt exclusion. Don't worry about it. By the time we get to 23, it'll be paid. Liar. Liar. Not even close. Not even close. Because you guys never stop spending. And as long as you're in, they're going to do exactly the same thing. And with that, time for the pep, though. Back to you. I think what needs to happen is, and it's not only us, we need to make sure that our viewers do it. We need to make sure that who, who they spread the information to, they spread the information. We need to make this a grassroots effort to get the true information out there. The true information. Paul cannot get a debt exclusion. I don't care how much he says, he cannot get a debt exclusion. He can only get a prop two and a half override. That's all he can get. We are not going into debt. We are not incurring a debt. If we were incurring a debt like we did with Durfee, we could get a debt exclusion. Somebody else is incurring the debt for Diamond. We have to pay the assessment. Like we do with Bristol Aggie. Bristol Agricultural High School has had several expansions to their properties, buildings and whatnot. And all that does is increase the assessment that the city of Fall River must pay. Based upon the number of students that go to the school. That's how it works at Diamond. We get here with an assessment based upon the number of students that go to the school from the city, which is approximately 75% of the students. When we had the opportunity, when we had the opportunity to vote on this, the city council stole it from us. And now Paul's saying the voters should have had a say. The voters should have had a say. It would have been more transparent. If the voters then had voted no to the diamond, they would not have been able to expand. What would have happened is it would have gone to a vote of all four communities. And a majority would have ruled. And if the majority said no new diamond, there would have been no new diamond. That's where the people could have been heard. I don't believe. I don't believe for a moment. I got one quick question for you, CJ. Go ahead. Paul saying that the voters should have had a say. Where was he when we were we, we were dealing with it in actuality? Why didn't he get up and publicly state that he felt that the voters should weigh in? But he didn't. As usual, it's it's BS uh, and political cover for himself. That's that's the thing. So I'm going to ask him a question. You, you know, we'll ask Paul a question. I asked you that question, but you know the answer to that. He didn't say it at the time because he didn't want the people to have to say. But I'm asking him, you think now, Paul, have you reconsidered the fact? Should the, should the people have had a say on how we spent the opera money? And with that, back to you. Well, you know, and I agree, Chip. You know, we should have had a say in the opera money. The city council should have had the right to say something. But the city council didn't have that right because Paul, like he did with the budget, stole that right from them. Took away their authority, guaranteed them under the law. But I follow the law. I follow the charter. Only when it's convenient for you, Paul. Yeah, well, okay? you, well let, let me tell you something. Those new businesses will not last in Fall River because Fall River cannot be gentrified. The fact is, it is a proven fact nationally that you can't gentrify this type of community. These blue-collar communities, they've tried gentrification a million times. 
they do not work in these communities, okay? Because these are blue collar communities and people from Boston are not gonna come down here to live. The first thing that people with a brain look at when they move and they relocate is crime and educational systems, both of which Fall River is a dismal at the bottom of the barrel compared to all the surrounding communities. So if you're moving out of Boston, and nobody's moving from Wellesley down here, uh, if you're moving out of Boston, you got a whole bunch of places between Boston and here to move into, okay? This has been tried before, maybe before you were born. But historically, nothing on a national level, whether it's Gary, Indiana, or any other community. When you look at the, you look at this country is filled with towns like Fall River, with cities like Fall River, that were dependent on not mills, maybe the, maybe the tractor factory. Communities like this, low income people, it doesn't work. It's not gonna work. And I'll tell you what, you think businesses are gonna come down here, they're not gonna last. And they're not going to be anywhere except in the Duval corridor anyway. This community will die. And I don't care what you think. We can prove our facts. The reality is that that's not going to work. You're not going to gentrify Fall River. Because people from Newton and Wellesley, when you say the name Fall River, they have a stroke. Okay? That's the way people think about Fall River. You people are all delusional. I was at a retirement convention at the Cape, and I have witnesses. We were talking about, they were talking about something we had done on a retirement board with our old director, Christine Tetral, about something we were doing. And one of the people from another board said, oh, that's really interesting, I'd like to really I'll go over that stuff with you when she invited her to Fall River. She said, well, come down to the office someday. We'll go over it. And you know what her response was? I'm not going to Fall River. She said, you can come down to our office. We'll talk about it. She said, but I'm not going to go to Fall River. Said, you think people in Wells are going to come to Fall River? You, you've, got, uh, you've got some serious... You've got some serious uh, brain damage because that doesn't happen. It doesn't happen. You're not going to see a whole bunch of people from Newton and Wellesley coming to Fall River. Look at the educational attainment levels. Look at the look at the look at the uh, look at the amenities they have in those communities. And they're going to come down here when you could stop anywhere in between. Welcome to you better you better you better start getting off that whatever you're smoking. You know, it's interesting because Aaron has a lot of good ideas that we talked about, like a Lizzie Borden Day. I brought that up a couple of years ago. You know, it was something that was amazing. We should do something like that. Okay? You know, how much and traction do you really think that's going to get? They've I, had, I, I understand that. They've had what? Listen, I, no, I'm sick of this horse shit about we're going to do one thing and it's going to cure the city. I know. The train's going to cure the city. The freaking... The, the, the battleship was going to cure the city. Lizzie Borden Day. There's been three movies about Lizzie Borden. Everybody in the world knows about Lizzie Borden. Yes. Lizzie Borden's been there forever. If it was any kind of tourist attraction, you're going to highlight Lizzie Borden. Remember when the freaking boats, the boat races were going to fix the city? You want me to go on? I can go on before that, that this guy was born and tell you all the bullshit they said was going to fix Fall River. The only way you fix a community is understanding how you fix that community. Fall River's a blue collar town. The only town this, this the only time this city was viable was when it had people working and we had small businesses that could stay in existence cuz people had money to spend. And that'll never happen cuz people with with college degrees who work in Boston are not going to move to Fall River. You got to retrain people to have jobs and have and and this is a blue collar town. 
That's why Gary, Indiana is still never recovered when the steel mills went out. And you can name a thousand cities like Fall River throughout this country that have never been rehabilitated because these bullshit politicians and these other yo-yos that believe the Kool-Aid think you can fix it with one thing. It takes a multifaceted thing and the core is jobs, working people. There wasn't one storefront in the Flint that was empty when I grew up. Did we have people from Wellesley down here? No. Did we have people from Newton down here? No. But we had everybody in the city basically working. They worked in the mills, but they worked. And you had furniture stores on Pleasant Street, you had every kind of store conceivable. It was like you didn't have to go to Main Street. Every store on Main Street was filled. The city was thriving. Not like a Newton. You didn't have the super fancy restaurants, but there were nine restaurants on Pleasant Street between Stafford Square and Bogle Hill. Nine! And I can name them all. Nine restaurants. And they all ran. And they all made money. That's what keeps small communities in business. Can some things help people? Yeah, you can help it, like Portland, Maine did. They revamped their, they revamped their harbor, and Maine is a tourist destination, and they worked on that, and they worked on a lot of multifaceted things. But these, these people that, that, that t talk this theoretical horse shit, that, you know, it doesn't bear out. This is government propaganda. They can make Fall River into Newton or Wellesley, and it's not going to happen. And look, CJ, take that thing off. I don't even want to hear it, okay? Because this guy, this guy is just, you know, you, you keep, look, I've been living in this city except for my military service my whole life. I've seen every conceivable bullshit political idea to fix it. And it can't be fixed because I'm a pragmatist. Yeah, now, I'm not a half full, half empty. It's there's water in the glass, and Rod, there's no water in this community. And the only way you'll ever fix this community, you will never inhabit this community with ninety thousand rich people. This is not that kind of community, and this is the, the way the majority of communities in this nation are. And I'm not going to get into a philosophical discussion because the facts speak for themselves. Lizzie Borden, boat races, the Fall River celebrates America. We've done it all. And Fall River's worse than it was 30 years ago. It hasn't improved. With all the harebrained ideas and all the harebrained other things, to fix it with one thing. And one thing doesn't fix a city. It never did and it never will. It can fix it temporarily. If you get a big giant tractor factory in some small town and everybody works there, it works until the tractor factory closes. And they send it over to China. And then the city is a ghost town. Fall River is not unique. It is unique in the fact that we probably have more delusionary people in this city than most. But it is not unique. There are thousands of communities like Fall River all over the United States. If you pay attention and you look, you can go to these cities that have been decimated when they lost the, the, the primary industry in that community. And small communities run on small businesses, not big businesses. We've seen it all. Amazon was going to fix Fall River. <clears throat> yeah, did a great job of doing that, didn't it? Doesn't do it. What fixes a community is jobs. If you can't figure out a way to get people to work, they don't necessarily have to work in one factory. Rhode Island did it. 
They trained some people in welding and they got jobs at electric boat. Problem is now, the city's deteriorated so much that people get a good job and make enough money, the first thing they'll probably do is move out of the city. That's the problem. And with that, I'm tired of discussing this because I'm tired of discussing it with people who, are, who have got their heads so far up their derriere, it's amazing that they haven't suffocated to death by now. Well, what's interesting is, what's interesting is at least the people are being civil. Um, they're getting out some ideas. That's a great thing uh, to hear ideas. Uh, whether you agree with them or not, it's another story. But I will tell you this, okay? Fall River has tried a lot of things. And we've been on the pre precipice of all of them. And we said that this was bullshit. Okay? And we said it over and over again. And we've always been proven to be right. People don't like it. But it, well, it's real simple, CJ. If you put everybody to work in this city, if you gave the majority of people a decent job and got them to stay in the city by maybe reducing crime and maybe getting a decent educational system so they don't move out when they finally do get a good job to a place that's got a better educational system and, and less crime, the city would then be, be, begin to see a renaissance you would see the city begin to get together again because the city is predicated on one thing, the inhabitants, and the inhabitants spend their money. Why is Newton Newton? Newton's got no industry except small business, restaurants and stuff. Why? Newton is a suburb of, fall of, of Boston. We're all a rich Bostonian. The people have got big jobs in Boston. Go to Newton with their $165,000 you know, median household income, and they support tons of restaurants. Last time I checked, and I'll be perfectly truthful, I haven't checked in a while, but Newton had 10,000 more businesses than we do. And, right. Newton's small, and Newton's smaller than us. And Newton right. has absolutely no major employment industry in that community. But see, these people aren't capable of critical thinking. They can't. They can't look at things and 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 look at thing and analyze it and say, why does Newton exist? Newton exists because it's a suburb of Boston, and it's extremely affluent, and that's where affluent they can commute into their jobs in a very short time. And why does Newton survive as a community? There's jobs in Newton, but they're mostly all in the service industry. Like I said. Newton's smaller than Fall River, but they have 10,000 more small businesses than we do. It's because, why? People got money. It's not rocket science. Even if people don't have as much money as they got in Newton, if they had money, we would be able to maintain small businesses, but we can't. We've seen small businesses dry up. There used to be a, a store on every corner in Fall River when people were working. We had, like I said, nine restaurants on on Pleasant Street between Stafford Square and Bogle Hill. But now, none of those restaurants exist anymore. Not one of them. Not one. Mark Hughes, I think, was the last one to close. And that was another icon of the city. But the And now is, the last original Chinese restaurant's closing, Nissan's. That's right. But, and, and it's but, like... But you know, and, the thing and, is, is that small business is having a problem. Big business is having a problem. Okay? Fast food industry is having a problem. People don't want to work. Ever since COVID, people don't want to work. They want to stay at home, play their video games, or work from home. And the government's they, not they helping. Got big CJ. jobs. But the government's big not jobs. helping. What is right, Boston it's not helping doing? anything. What is Boston doing, and what is the city of Fall River doing? Making it harder for the small businesses to survive. Right. They're going to increase their water bills. They're going to increase their tax bills, and Boston's going to do the same. And then they're going to increase their excise taxes. They're going to increase everything. They tax. This is why, look at, it's, it's simple. For Massachusetts is number two in the, in the United States now of people moving out of the state. Not just Fall River, but the entire state. That's the lunacy of this this stuff this dialogue that they're trying to create we're going to get people to move to fall river listen the next time most the most people who are rich and who are packing up to leave they're not coming to fall river 
They're waving at Massachusetts as they lead at an average of 1100 a month. Why? Because what does our government do? They raise our taxes and force people out. And so it's not only it's not only problematic for small businesses to stay in existence, our government is making it harder for them to do it. And in cities like Fall River, we get hit first. When when the state gets a cold, we get pneumonia. Yet maybe maybe the businesses in Newton can survive, because like let's face it, they got five times the median household income we have. Yeah, they'll be able to go to out to eat. They they making big huge money. But small businesses in places like Fall River never happen. I mean, look at this is a concentrated effort in the blue states to basically destroy their economy. That's why you're seeing people from California, New York, Massachusetts is now number two behind California. New York has slid down to number three, followed by New Jersey. It's not coincidental that all the people that are leaving are leaving blue states to go to red states where there's no taxes, where there's a, a very friendly business climate. Just look at South Dakota. No tax. Tennessee. Everywhere they're moving to. What do they have in common? A better, a better environment for small businesses and people to thrive. They have jobs down there and they have low taxes and that's the formula and like I said if I hit if I hit the Powerball besides suing the city of Fall River in absentia because I won't be I'll only keep an address here but I will I will I will build a nice log cabin up in South Dakota for the warm weather and I'll I'll build some I'll build something else in a nice warm climate and I'll I'll see you via via this as I'm in here and I'll drop into <laughs> Fall River every couple of days to check how my lawyers are doing to sue to, to suing for suing the government in this state. That's right. You know, we're not saying that every business in Fall River has failed. That's the first thing. I mean, you know, you have Christopher Portugal, you know, which was just brought up, um, has made made it on you know, national nationally. That's because they provide a supply of Portuguese food to the nation, not just locally. And they have worked to make sure that their uh, store is broadcast. They've actually gone nationally with their show, their store on Maria's uh, Kitchen. You know. Yeah, here so, we go. But here we go again, CJ. They're going to pick out one, but they can't even critically analyze that. Because no, know I, I'm just saying. But, but no, but wait a minute. Look, well, I'm look. I'm tired of this. Okay, I'm, I'm I've had it. I'm I'm over to here with this bullshit. Okay. Niche stores, niche stores have always survived. Right. If you lived in Little Italy, the Italian stores always survived because the Italians all went to buy Italian stuff. The Portuguese community in this city supports Portuguese businesses. That's why the only restaurants that survive to any degree and to any amount in this city, we don't have an Italian restaurant in this city. We don't have any virtually anything except Chinese, which has always survived because they give you cheap food and give you a lot of it, and ethnic places, because ethnic places are, are always frequented by ethnic people. It's right. like New York City. You go to Little Italy, Little Italy was, was survived because the Italians shot there. A little Puerto Rico, every place has got these things. You can't point to those businesses. They're not general businesses. They are businesses that survive because they have a particular group that always shop there. Just like a lot of Portuguese realtors made a lot of money when they were the first Portuguese speaking people that were beginning to sell houses to the Portuguese community. Why did they get rich? Because all the Portuguese people went to the Portuguese-speaking realtor, and they made money. Right. Now, th this this kind of you know you can slit you can you can peddle that bullshit to somebody else that doesn't pay attention. But I'm tired of listening to the bullshit. And with that, I'm done. All right. Well, we've uh, we've been going for an hour, so I think we've spent enough time. I want to thank you all for watching, and remember.
stay safe, stay angry, and hold your politicians accountable. And remember, call up your state delegation. Tell them no new taxes. We'll see you on Friday.